everybody. I'm getting ready to pour. Put my hand in the camera. Just uh, checking to see if anybody can see me. So, if you can see me, make a comment or two. Can you see me yet? Hey! Bonsai Kathy. Hey, Alana, Linda, Jane Cash, and Cindy Fox. Karen, Carrie, Roxy, Carrie Leibarger, Bargerham. Awesome. I'm glad y'all can hear me. This is my first live feed from my new studio. Oh, hey! <laughs> he didn't tell me. He didn't tell me he was putting a camera on the front of me. Oh, goodness, here. Let me just put my lipstick on real quick. Oh, yeah. I gotta pat my lipstick on for you. <laughs> oh. So yeah, I'm in, I'm in my new classroom. I had my first class yesterday and it was a blast. It was just a hoot. So, um, I'm going to pretend that camera's not there because that'll distract me. <laughs> that will distract me. I'll feel very self-conscious. But let me get grab my canvas. So... Hello, 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 Scooter, Julie, Josie, Deborah, Valerie, Christina. <laughs> you think that's funny, Christina, put my lipstick on? <laughs> um, Marsha, did I miss anybody? Kathy McLeod, Maribel, uh, Angela, Megan, Jan, Tammy. Cindy, Kyra, Judy, there, well, there's a bunch of people on here, yay! So, I've got an 11 by 14 canvas, push pins on the back, and I've seen people posting uh, pictures in some of their little video clips of the KISS pour, and I thought, what is the KISS pour? Is it my microphone? Might be my microphone. Does that sound any better? I want to make sure you can understand me. Maybe I need to slow down and not talk so fast. Hey, Carol, Melissa, Jane, um, Lee, Ida, Kelly. Jan, Danette. So I'm just making sure I'm saying hello to everybody. It's hard to actually do a pour and look at your phone to see who's online and, you know, do it consecutively. So um, anyway, so I saw people were doing the KISS pour and I thought, what is the KISS pour? So I looked up a couple of videos and basically I saw it was kind of like a tree ring pour that you pour consecutively in the middle. And I haven't done that yet, so I thought, shoot, I'm gonna give it a try. So before I start, I'm gonna lay out just a little bit of a white mixture. And my white is, you know, one to one ratio, as always, and I was actually meaning to pour a little bit in my squeeze bottle here. Hold on one second. So this is what I do. I mix up my stuff in a, you know, a, a different cup and then I transfer it to my squeeze bottles. And these squeeze bottles are a little tricky and this is a dirty one. It's got fingerprints. I'm not like Christina Welch who everything is top notch clean. All my stuff is fingerprinted. <laughs> if they needed my DNA fingerprint stuff, they'd have it all over the place, even gloves, no gloves. But um, 
So my typical ratio of paint is one to one. That's usually what I go with, one to one ratio of paint to Floetrol or Oetrol. And today I'm actually using Floetrol. So I'm back to Floetrol today. I switch between Floetrol and Oetrol. Oetrol is a, a company in Europe and they provide me with free product to demo for them. And I actually really like Oetrol better. There's less fluggers in it. That word that I use, fluggers. So, just wanted, um, wanted you to know I am using Floetrol today. I don't think it makes any difference technically in the pour. It's just I think Oetrol is a little bit better quality and probably levels out a little better and that kind of stuff. I'm just, I'm a little bit more drawn to the Oetrol. Getting a little fancy on you. If the blue light is on, that means that camera's on. Okay. Well, I'm going to try not to pay attention to that camera anyway. So, in my mind, I kind of wanted to do the contrast of the blues against the oranges because I love my favorite color combination is purple, blue, turquoise, red, and orange. Like that was what I used in my sign color for my new gallery and studio signs. So what I have mixed up here is Liquitex Basics. This is Cerulean Blue. I actually wanted to use Prussian Blue, but I didn't have any large quantities of Prussian Blue on hand. And I've pulled out my Arteza paints because I do love the Arteza paints. This is Ultramarine Blue. <clears throat> and the this kind of blue-green color here is a cross between Viridian Green and Thalo Green. I didn't have enough of the, I only had maybe half of a tube of this Viridian Green, and these are smaller tubes. So I put the Thalo Green, which is a deeper version. So it's a mixture of the two there. And then I've got Rose Matter, and I didn't have enough of the smaller tube of Rose Matter, so I added some Soho Rose Matter, which is a totally different looking Rose Matter. That's the thing with um, different brands is they're going to come up with kind of different color combinations. So that is a mixture of those two. And then I've got this kind of bubblegum pink that I had yesterday that I still had plenty of, and I wanted to use the pink. Because I really liked the contrast of the red and that bubblegum pink together in my pour. And let me, let me pull that out and show y'all real quick. Marissa was wondering if you could slow down a little because she's having problems understanding you because she doesn't speak English. Okay, I'll try to slow down. So in my class yesterday, we did a swipe, and um, so I swiped with purple and blue, and these were pretty much the primary colors, purple, blue, a teal color, a green, which was not a deep green, it was kind of a Kelly green, uh, a lime color, a yellow, an orange, which you don't really see any orange in here, and a red, and a pink, and, but I really liked the way the pink popped through that red color there. I loved that. And then I actually went in here and just dripped in a few drops of uh, red and yellow and just kind of blew it around and put a little texture in that really dark area. So that was one I did with the class. It's still partially wet. But anyway, I love the the cool red and pink, and I wanted instead of a bright orange or a yellow, I mixed this um, Arteza color called Indian Yellow. So Indian Yellow is kind of like an orangey yellow. It's like a, it's almost a little bit oranger than a school bus yellow, kind of. So I kind of like those colors, which that will make it kind of warm, and then the cool colors of the blues and the turquoise and green. I'm only going to use three of these and I'm trying to figure out which three I want. I want some contrast. So I know I'm going to use the turquoise and this and I just got to figure out if I want to go with green. I think I'm going to stick with the blues. So I'll put that aside for now. 
So I've got two cups and my ratio that I mixed in this group today was two parts Floetrol to one part paint. So I doubled my Floetrol today just for the fun of it. So I'm looking up at the camera. I always look up at the camera to make sure that everything is in the frame. So I have a bad habit of looking up into the camera. And you're not used to that camera being right there. And I'm not used to you being there. <laughs> And I must throw in a little bit of the white, which is just a one-to-one -one mixture, and water is added to all of these because Arteza paint is very thick and creamy and rich. So you definitely have to add water even with Floetrol added to it, doubled in this amount. I still needed water to get it to the right consistency, and I call it like warm honey running off a stick. And I don't, I don't eat honey but I know what the consistency looks like or the consistency of like what glue looks like kind of running off of a stick or coming out of a bottle. It stays in a steady stream. It doesn't drip like water and it doesn't stick to your stick like cement. So um, it's basically the kiss pour. What I could tell from the videos that people do is they pour the two little puddles together and so these little tree ring pores kind of meet in the middle and they kiss is what I, how I interpret it. So I don't even know how people put the layers in their cups. I'm just going to do some layers. And this is an 11 by 14 canvas, so I don't need a ton of paint. I'm going to stick a little white in here and there. And I'm trying to do it kind of gradient. And when you do it gradient, you're kind of trying to layer one color on top of the other instead of letting it go down into the paint like a dirty pour. Like if you were to pour above your cup, the paint would sink down into that color. And see, my pink is sinking right now. Who did? Thank you, Tammy. I appreciate that. So I'm going to put these aside. I think I've got plenty of paint in that one. And then now I'm going to do the blue, the cerulean blue, which is a really pretty color. And I'll do the turquoise. So it's kind of like pouring. I slant my cup a little bit. It's kind of like how you pour a soft drink or beer. I don't drink beer, but it's very foamy. And so kind of the secret to not having so much foam in your cup is kind of angling your cup to get rid of the foam. It's kind of the same principle as far as you know, layering your cup up with colors is if you tilt it a little bit, it'll kind of trickle down and lay on top of each other. And so that's what I'm doing. And, you know, I'm in my happy place when I'm pouring paint, so I hope y'all are too. So this is more paint than I need, so I'm going to stop. Yeah, I, cloud asks if you added hair serum or I actually did not add any, you know, I'm a cell girl. I love cells like crazy, but today I did not put the silicone in um, because it's kind of like a tree ring pour. I wanted to see if it would do it without cells. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so y'all can see more up close. And I just realized I didn't turn my lights on. Now it's focusing. i got to get it to focus. And Linda was wondering, Linda um, Bennett, did you mix up your turquoise? I did mix my turquoise. Because there's not a turquoise that I absolutely love. I used uh, Artist Loft turquoise, and then I used, I'll pull it out of the trash can. It's, it's been doing that here lately. It's not focusing. When, it gets, when my hand comes down, it focuses, I think. So, but... Um, Liquitex Bright Aqua Green. 
I like to use this. I like to use this mixed with the turquoise. Oh, thank you, Sharon. I appreciate it. Um, so that's my mixture for the turquoise, is, the, is a combination of turquoise and bright aqua green. It, it makes it just a little bit greener and a little bit crisper to me. So let me get my lights turned on here. I got these little handy dandy LED lights. Okay, we're going to see if it is it focusing in yet. I think it's focused. It is. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my two cups here. <laughs> And I'm kind of, I'm not real coordinated, so we're not, I'm not sure how this is going to pan out here, but um, I'm going to pour in the center together at the same time, and I'm not doing it slow either. So I think this is what people call the kiss. That was my interpretation. So I'm just letting the paint kind of finish up out of the cup. <laughs> so here is what it looks like up close. So basically, the, the cool colors have kissed against the, the hot colors. Hot, baby. So, and I think there is some silicone in my pink because it was leftover paint that I had already mixed. So as I can, I can see already, there's some cells kind of popping up on that side, and that's okay. I really, I don't mind cells. I'm going to tilt this a little bit. And see what happens. This, this is a kiss pour? Is that what you're calling it? I'm calling it a kiss pour. I think this is what people call a kiss pour, but I may be wrong. That's what I pulled up on YouTube when I went to look for it. And see, I don't, I don't even know how to stretch this thing out with it being split in the middle. That's the interesting part of it it's going to probably totally distort it. But we'll end up getting something one way or the other. Making sure I'm in frame here and it's focused. Now I'm going to tilt it a little bit to the sides to try to get it to go to those corners. Now I'm taking it back to the center. So we have a bunch of love it, you nailed it, it's pretty. Um, I, I, she says that they did one on their live last Monday and it is called a PS4. Okay. And Linda Bennett said real quick there's a face. I'm sure that face will go away because after <laughs> tilting, you know after you tilt and you're things that you see, they kind of go away. But I kind of wish I didn't have the silicone in the pink. And I really didn't think that through all the way, but that's why those cells are popping up on my red side there. And I almost wish I had put some orange in it, some orange orange, because that Indian yellow looks very yellow now that it's against the red. So now I've got to figure out I got to figure out how I want to work this because I want to I want to do something different with it. Like I don't want to just leave it like um, what can I do? What can I do? Um, 
Um, I'm going to take a fork. We're buffering again. So I'm just taking a fork and I'm trying to bring some blue over here. Ah, I wish that silicone was not in the pink. So I'm trying to just intermingle these colors a bit just to give it a little bit. if I can take some pink or red into the blue. I'm going to make my own angel wings. <laughs> I had never had any luck with the angel wing pour. So I'm just dragging over. And then I'm going to tilt it again just to see what happens. But I'm wiping my fork off every time I swipe so that I don't stick color back into my color. <clears throat> Make my own little tree ring here. Valerie Smith gives you uh, about eight or nine thumbs up. Thank you. I love just playing with my paint. That is the part for me that is so much fun because art really is my therapy. It's my escape. It is just, it's my world. So I could come here and play all day in my paint. So now I'm going to tilt off on the sides a little bit and see what happens. So it's going to spread out. And y'all might say, oh no. Patricia Lara gives you a uh, clapped OK and thumbs up. And Marie says that she shared um, the video with her friends and thumbed up. It, Thank you. Love her and her passion. I love her too. Greg says he loves me too. I really do not care for this. So I think what I'm going to do is take it this way. I'm going to try to pour off some of that pink, I think. Maria L. says pretty colors. Linda Bennett, I love it too. Everybody loves it, and then you're going to go and ruin it by moving it. <laughs> Greg says I'm ruining it. I don't like, I don't like that. Carrie Easley says, have fun, you nailed the kiss. I've been putting it up. This is really some pretty edges here. I, I don't know if you can see it the way the edges did. I love the edges there. Um, I'm going to try to get rid of some of this paint in this cup. It looks like fire, but I don't like the pink in the fire. That's the problem. So I'm going to put a little contrast here. Uh, Bonsai Kathy says that's me, feathered on its own. Uh, 
contact at. He says, oh, it does. CK, you're right. Patricia Lara says, absolutely stunning. Thank you, everybody. Um, I just want to get rid of that. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some red in my cup. A little trickle of white. I'm going to pour that Indian yellow. Re-pour. Kind of like a tree ring right here. I like that better than the pink, so, uh, so I'm going to try my card. I really love this deep red into the blue. I really don't want to affect that, and I'm not sure if I can do this. Judy says, I think you are the only one that doesn't like it. So I'm just swiping off, and it's turning purple, which is okay. So now I'm getting the cells. That's funny. So I'm going to drag my fork through at a time or so. I could, but the pink is is underneath, and if I use my spatula, if I dig in, I think it's really going to muddy up. That's the only thing I'm scared about. So I'll do a little red. Here's a here's. I'm gonna do a little bit of. and turquoise. Now I'll do my little my little palette knife. bring it to a point. <laughs> I don't know, y'all. Now I like that better. I have poured off so much paint there. It's unbelievable. But um, Patricia Lara asks, um, um, 
silly question with all that extra paint, will it be too much? It's thick, but um, it'll dry. It's not. I don't. It's not gonna. It's not gonna do cracking or anything like that. Uh, I never have issues with cracking and crazing. Um, I do own GAC 800, but I never use it. Anyway, I think. I think I can live. I think I can live with this. I think I like that better than it being so much into the center of the painting. I'm gonna put a little bit more of this. GAC 800 is made by. I think it's Liquitex. <clears throat> I have a bottle somewhere. I can't get to it though, but um, it's you add it to your pouring mixture and it's to help prevent cracking and crazing. And I guess crazing is kind of like craters. It's not like true cracks, but it's where it's uneven. You know, there's higher spots and lower spots where your paint dries really thick and there's upper and lower levels of painting. That would be what I consider crazing. And then cracks are just, they look like eggshell cracks, literally. So, so this is weird, but I do love, I love the colors together. So I think I'm going to stop on this one. Karen Arthur, um, can you tell the difference? So there it is. Much I can't really tell the difference. Oh. And Nisa says it's made by Golden. Golden. Okay, okay, it is Golden. G-O-L-D-E-N is the Thank brand. You, Thank you, Nisa, for the info. Happy to have you here. Uh, Malucha Marino says beautiful. Jane Cash, how do you keep your tip paint from cracking? Well, the key is not to have it in a really cold area or to have like a lot of fans going on where there's a lot of air circulation because what happens is it dries the surface and then everything underneath stays wet. So um, when you have cracking going on, your paint is so thick and the temperature change or whatever might be uh, too hot, too cold, too much airflow. And so that surface dries, and then everything underneath stays wet. And then it, when it really dries, it, it kind of comes apart. I've actually got a pretty good example right here on my wall. This was a, a canvas I did quite a while back. And you see the ridges. It's not cracked. But you can see the layers. It's like hills and valleys. If you can see that in the reflection, that is what I call crazing. And this was a canvas I did probably eight or nine months ago. And I put on a super, super thick paint. It did not crack, but it, it just in the layers of the colors, there's all these little rivers and valleys of color. But actually, this has grown on me. It's weird, and maybe I don't like that little point there. But um, I love, I love the red and blue together. Patricia Lara donated $14.99, and Lisa donated $30. Thank you. Everybody, thank you so much for your donations. I really appreciate it. I'll try it just a, one more time here again and get some of that blended in maybe. I want to keep that warm spot though. I just don't want this uh, pink area. But I don't want to drag my paint very much because when you do keep going over and over it again, I put some blue on my, my little palette knife. If you keep dragging your colors, they will turn gray or very 
muddy looking. I'm just trying to get rid of those little pink spots and as I put my palette knife in it, I wipe it right back off. Just trying to get rid of some of that pink. So I got a little Superman thing going on there in the middle, but I'm going to call this one done. <laughs> so there's that one. So now I'm looking at my colors and trying to figure out I'm going to bring my beautiful greenish color. I was thinking it would be fun to do just a regular dirty pour. And this is what I suggest to beginners. When you're just learning how to paint and you have an issue with putting too many colors in or muddying it up so much that you know, you're frustrated with it, is starting at, with the basics. And when I say basics, I mean white, black, and one color. And just see what happens. And you might be really pleasantly surprised. So I'm going to move these out of the way. And see, I, I wish I was as neat and clean as Christina and her husband are. They, when she does her live shows, they don't, they don't miss a drop. It's all clean and pristine, and um, I just, I can't pour that way. I'm just messy. I try, but I'm a messy girl. Let's see. This is an 8 by 10 and I'm going to do this beautiful blue green, this emerald green, which is the combination of phthalo green and viridian green. And I'm going to use white and black and just do a, a traditional dirty pour. And so I have not added any silicone or OGX, but I am going to add some into my green. So what do you think I should do? Silicone or OGX, I wonder. Anybody have a preference? I have them both. Christina says it's my OCD. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got spot on treadmill lubricant or OGX. Which do you want me to use? I'm going to give you a minute to tell me. Make sure I'm in the, in the frame. So I got my black and white. They're just mixed one to one ratio. My green color is two parts uh, flow trial to. Linda Bennett says that her paintings are just dark. They look okay. You need to write her paints. We got OGX, uh, OGX, OGX, silicone. Janet says I'm messy right now. Uh, I'm messy right with you, Sandra. <laughs> Hey, Janet. Uh, Tammy says OGX. We got silicone, silicone, OGX, OGX, silicone. Oh, my goodness. Roxy says Christina has taught Alan well. I tell you what. Silicone, OGX, OGX. We're got, we'll do. I think OGX is actually winning by uh, Is OGX be winning? Winning by hair. <laughs> winning by hair. No pun intended, right? OGX hair serum. Oh, smells so good. Okay, so I do OGX, totally different from silicone. When I do silicone, I do a drop per ounce of paint. So if this is eight ounces of paint, which is probably, it's probably about seven ounces, I would do seven drops of silicone. With OGX, I just do one drop. Jane Cash said both with question marks. You might want to explain why you do or don't. I could do both. You want me to try both? We'll do, we'll do a drop of OGX and a drop of silicone. I got to open the bottle though first. Okay. We put both in. We're going to give it a try. So a few swirls. And I'm just curious to see because this is a very vibrant, beautiful color. 
and I want to see it with black and white just for fun. So I'm going to start out the cup with a layer of white. Lady Jamalina says hello. Hey, Jan. Maggie says good idea, Jane. So I'm going to do this as a traditional dirty pour. I'm going to let it drip in there and go and sink down and all that good stuff. I want it to kind of sink in. I'm not layering this like a gradient pour. I'm going to do it like a true dirty pour where you just let that paint go down. So I can even pour it from up higher if I want to bring the cup up higher and it will you know, go down into that paint. And I'm going to do the same with the black. So I don't really need probably more than three ounces of paint. I didn't even look at my chart, and there's always a chart that tells you how much to use. I would pull it up on my phone, but then I can't see my comments on the phone, which I'm trying to look at, but I don't want to be distracted. Well, I'm reading the good ones. Yeah, Greg is reading them to me. But there... Hello, everyone. Valerie says, Valerie Smith Art says, I use it OGX as well. Angela Bo. Lady Jamella said hi to another viewer. Okay. And Karen says, I am enjoying this so much. So, I think I have enough paint. I'm going to put the canvas on top and flip. And make sure I'm in the frame here. Tap on it. And then I use a push pin and I poke a few holes. And that releases that pressure and it allows the paint to flow down in the cup. But I don't have a ton of paint in it, so it's not like, like gushing out because it's not a ton of paint. It's only about three or four ounces of paint. Maggie Johnson says, I love watching husband and wife teams. Greg is a good, Greg is a good support for me. He, uh, Angie's art student that says, hey, Sandra. Hey there, Angie. Norma says, hey, from Florida. Hey, Norma. Okay, so this to me is the fun part. Beautiful, beautiful in the cup. The cup sometimes has a more beautiful look than anything else. So here it is already selling up with one drop of OGX and one drop of silicone. Wow. So I'm always amazed when people say they can't get cells because I'm wondering, why can't you get cells? I, I mean, I have a really easy time getting cells and I don't, I don't know what the issue is, but here they are. I've got my paint covered torch. It's not it's not used if you don't have paint on it. I'm going to pop the bubbles here. Anytime I use a torch or a heat gun, when I do a heat gun, it's loud, so that's why I'm not doing it now. Even when I do the heat gun or the torch, to me, usually what happens is you get these little tiny white specks. I don't know if you can see them. Karen says, love the green. Angie's art studio says love the colors. It is Both. pretty. It says teamwork when you're going to paint. Uh, when are you going to paint, Greg? Greg painted yesterday. Yeah, you should show mine. I, when I finish this pour, I will show you his paintings. He did really, really well. Bonsai Kathy did say he painted yesterday. So I'm going to very slowly tilt it. This, is, this has got lots of cells. They're not gigantic cells, but there's lots of them. And I probably didn't use enough paint, but that is okay. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little bit of paint around the edges really fast. And I'll just use my finger because it does. it's not going to be perfect. You're going to pretty much take the paint over this white for the most part, or maybe not, but it just gives you something for the paint to flow over easier. It makes that paint move a little easier. Trina Garum says, I've never liked to use green, but this looks great. I've been missing out. 
Thank you, Bonsai Kathy. I really did like my tree. We're going to show you Greg's pores here shortly. So the black is really strong down here. So what I'm doing is I'm tilting this way first. And then I'm going to come back this way and maybe tilt off a little bit of that black. But I, I mean, I do like the black with it. That's the great thing about white and black is white and black look good with any color. And this is a, a great way when you're learning to do pours to just experiment with three colors. So, the gemologist says it looks exactly like malachite. Malachite, yeah, it does look like malachite. Actually, I kind of like this little corner white. I'm going to... Kathy said that um, Alicia and I had fun yesterday as well. Oh, it, Bonsai Kathy. I didn't even realize until just now who Bonsai Kathy is. Kathy was sitting here in my studio yesterday for hours watching us paint. She and her daughter came to watch. And I did not realize this is the Kathy that was here yesterday. So, hey, Kathy. I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. I'm just like totally brain dead. I'm going to use my straw and just blow a little bit. Tina Ruff says it does look like an And um, DK's Lucky Travel says it's showing marbling. Dennis says looking good. He says, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> so there's an answer to your question. You can use silicone and OGX if you want to. Just keep in mind it's, that you're not going to get huge cells. I think when you put the two in together, you're going to get cells, but they're going to be on the smaller side. And also, this is an 8x10 canvas, so it's not, I don't have a lot of room to stretch it. But... I love, I love this, actually. This is the joy of yours, is and seeing what you can come up with, um, you know, without even, you don't even have to have a whole set of paint colors. You can use three basic colors, black, white, and one color. Karen Arthur says, I'd pay for that. It's beautiful. Jeanette Stenger says, loving this one. Sure, my edges are covered. But yeah, that is that is really pretty. So I am liking that a whole lot. I'm not a green fan, but it is a really pretty painting, I think. So I'm going to move this one away. Linda Bennett says it reminds me of a Oh, yeah, so she said a wave, and that made me think that I would like to do a wave, I think, on this live pour. I don't, I have, um, I don't have any, like, in-between canvases. I've got a 12 by 12 inch canvas ready. I'll do the 12 by 12 inch. We'll do that one. So I'm just going to get my, my little setup ready here. And these are, you know, puppy pads or you can, you know, get them for people as well. And I'm using a black, um, let me zoom back out so you can see. This is a kennel liner. So you, you put it inside of a dog kennel and it's plastic. And this one is about 36 inches across, and I think it's 22 inches deep. And you can use a washing machine liner, which is a plastic liner that goes below the washing machine, in case your washing machine leaks or anything. So I've got an 8-foot table here, but I've got my butcher paper down on it. But then I've got my little tray here. It just kind of contains your paintings. 
and something that protects your table or whatever you're pouring on. So that's what I've got underneath that I'm using to pour on. So, what about my tree? Oh, I've got to show you. I have to show you Greg's paintings. He's asking. Let me zoom in a little bit more again. Yes, I do. So the first one we did was just a traditional dirty pour. And here is Greg's dirty pour. And I actually think it's pretty. He's not crazy about it, but I think it's really, really, really pretty. So, and, but I also love, I love turquoise and reds and oranges and purples. Yeah, the green, I'm not as crazy about with. If that were blue, that would be really gorgeous or, or a deep purple. But I still think for an overall dirty pour, he did really well. And this was with silicone, and it made really huge cells. And the thing about the silicone, though, is when it dries, you can see spots of the, the oil on top of your canvas, whereas with OGX, that's not so much the case. I think because you're only putting one drop of OGX into your paint color, you don't have as much of that oily residue. So that is one thing I noticed, that when you use silicone, because you're using more drops of it, you have, you have a little bit of a greasy look on top of your dry canvas. So here is his swipe. So we did a swipe, and what he did was he put his colors in a triangle. So he did streaks of red, and he did streaks of green, and then this area he just put some black. And then he swiped it with black, and he came up with this tree shape, which is pretty cool. And then, you know, I, I always tell people if all the cells don't really pop up to the surface, you can take your straw and blow on it. And when you blow, it'll make these cool little shapes like this right here. They almost look like little, um, even like this little area right there. They come out in these little organic looking shapes that look leafy or almost like uh, butterflies or little critters or whatever. But that's what happened. So when he swiped, because he, he put his colors in a triangle, it came out the shape of the tree. And that what, then he took a, a squirt bottle, the squirt bottle with re, uh, yellow paint, and he did a drop of paint, <laughs> and he did a skewer to make the little yellow stars. Kathy says he did a rapid fire blow. <laughs> yeah. He, he blew through his straw, and he was doing it differently from the girls. I, it was just kind of weird. He was doing like a rapid fire kind of blowing. And I said, what are you doing? So, but, so this is still wet. So that's why you see like a dark black here, and then here it's lighter. And this is one reason why I tell people when you, they ask if you have to varnish your canvas, you don't have to varnish it. But if you want your colors to pop again, this is why you varnish your canvas, because you see how dull that black looks right here? Right there. It looks dull. And then this looks really deep, like a deep black. That's what happens when you put that gloss varnish over it, is that black pops again, and it turns to like the black black. So when you put a glossy varnish over your colors, especially dark colors, this is what happens. It makes it look shiny and deep again. Now, on light colors, it's not so much the case, but it, it always helps to put a coat of varnish anyway, even if it's just a matte or satin finish. But I just wanted you to see his painting, and then he has this little 
yellow burst in the corner too. He got really creative on us. So his swipe looked different from all, all of our swipes look different. I'll just show you real quick. These are two more of my students' paintings. One, uh, one girl, Margot, she did this swipe, and then she kept stretching it so she got these elongated cells, but I thought this was really pretty. I really liked it, and it kind of looked similar to mine. It's just mine was not as stretched out down there. And here's another dirty pour that one of the girls did. Steph did this one. And I loved her colors that she picked on this one. This one was gray and white and a golden yellow and a teal and then a, like a deep magenta color and a touch of black. And I thought this was a really, really pretty color combination. So I thought, I've got to do, I've got to do something in that color combination one day. So those are those. Kathy DePaula says you better watch out. <laughs> so let's do, let's do a wave. That sounds like it would be fun to do. So I think what I'll do is I'll start with my white base coat because with the wave you want to be able to move your paint around and you and for me I like to have a little bit of negative space, of, you know, white negative space. And I have to make sure that my little, this is a Wilton Easy Glide Icing Fondant Tool. And um, you just want to make sure you don't have any colors that have dripped on it or anything like that. You want to make sure that if you're spreading white, it's just white paint on there. So I'm going to move that back out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and put some, I think I'm going to put OGX in the other colors. Just for the chance of maybe some larger cells, we'll see. Like I said, this ratio of 2 to 1 is different for me because I always normally do 1 to 1 ratio. So... I'm curious to see if it makes any difference on like how many cells you get, that kind of thing. And, you know, as far as bubbles, you know, sometimes I have bubbles and sometimes I don't. I usually don't have that many bubbles in my paint. But, you know, you can pop them with your finger, you can blow on them. Even just blowing on them with your breath will often get rid of the bubbles. So I don't, I don't, you know, you can, you can torch it and get rid of the bubbles like really quick. Like really quick. You never want to dry the surface of your paint. So I'm going to move this up just a little bit. Get me another cup. Let me get this smaller cup. And I'm going to... So I'm going to, let me, before I forget, I'm going to add. Is the kennel tray leveled? The kennel tray is kind of, the table is level. The kennel tray is on the table, but it's plastic. And it has a little bit of give right in the center. But it doesn't, it doesn't really make my canvases slant or anything like that. But it does have a little give to it. And I think the washing machine trays typically they have like six little uh, grooves that are kind of raised a little bit. So then you also have to layer, I think like, I think Christina had like a layer of cardboard over her washing ma machine tray. And then she had her um, like a plastic tablecloth and then maybe a puppy liner on top of that. So, um, but this is almost level, the plastic is. It just has a little give here and there, but it's, it's not really, it doesn't affect my canvas. The weight of the canvas still is okay. So I'm going to put one drop in my 
Um, Lady Jen just donated 20. Thank you, Jan. I'll just take my, oh, here's my thing. Okay, so. Did you show the honey consistency when we started? You talked about it, but I don't think you showed it. Is it, okay, so here, here is the way I like my paint. There you go. See, that's a good reason for that second camera. Yeah, so I don't typically get to show you that, but if you see how it falls off the stick and it doesn't drip, now if it drips, it's too watery. So, and I want to add a bit of lime green, because I love lime green. So I'm gonna use my Sour Apple Deco Art that is one-to-one -one with Floetrol, and it has silicone in it, and I shake it. So, you know, my bottles, my squeeze bottles, I usually typically use them more for the swiping techniques, and it gives a little bit smaller cells, a little bit more lacing effect. But, you know, occasionally I'll throw them into a dirty pour as well. But I'm going to do a dirty pour cup, and I'll start with a little bit of white, and I'm just using the cup that I used before. I'm not even getting a clean cup. And I'm just going to do, I'm letting, I'm letting it kind of drop in there pretty good. I'm not trying to layer it. But they I, didn't see the uh, consistency. They didn't? Okay. I'll go back over that. So I know I have more than plenty of paint in here. Hmm. Put a little bit more of that ultramarine on top and then I'm done. Okay, so you wanted to see the consistency again. I'm hoping you can see that. Okay. So I tried to show a pretty good, you know, side view of that where you can see the consistency. I'm going to pull out my credit card in case I need it. I get thirsty when I talk. So, okay, let's see. Trying to decide how I want to do this. Lady Jim says, P.S. Thank you for sharing the full angle video. I love it. One day I'm going to try it for my granddaughter. Uh, Karen, Arthur, and Norma all say purple on that. Showing me. Awesome. I moved you to the center of the screen. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're doing a wave. I forgot. So it looks funny right now. So don't panic. I'm just letting it sit for a few minutes. When you use OGX, I like for it to sit because if I heat it, it's going to bring up those tiny little dots. But if you just let it sit with OGX and rest, these cells will pop through. And I didn't, I didn't even use half of my paint in my cup to pour on here. So I've got a lot more paint left in my cup. 
So I'm just giving it a few minutes for the cells to grow. And I'm tilting it just a little bit. I think I'm going to put a little bit more down here. Um, Norma says I came in late. What is OGX? OGX is a it's an coconut milk hair serum. So the key with OGX, there's lots of OGX hair products. It has dimethicone in it. So this has paint on it, but here is what it looks like. It says coconut milk anti-breakage serum. But if you look at the ingredients, on here the second ingredient is dimethicone. So it needs to be one of the very first ingredients in the product. So this is a product that smells like coconut, kind of. It's a really wonderful scent. And you put it in your hair. But it has dimethicone in it, and that is what makes these nice, lovely, big cells. So, um, and it takes very, very little. It just takes one drop in a cup of paint. And you can do a pump, and a pump will give you at least a teaspoon. And so I don't do a full pump. And some people even take, I know, I think Christina, she may, if she uses OGX, she moves it from this bottle into a squeeze bottle so that when she squeezes it, she can count her drops or whatever. So if that's easier for you to do, I just don't, I just don't pull the trigger on the pump as much. So, so I've got kind of the shape of the wave. So what I'm going to do is take my card and very lightly skim that surface. So I'm barely touching it. And so what it does is it, it drags that color just on the surface of the white. So, and let me zoom in even more for you. Make sure I'm centered here. Okay. Norman says, oh my God, I've had that in my drawer for so long. <laughs> yeah. It's a wonderful product. I don't use it in my hair, but it smells really good. So I'm going to take this and just drag it. And you can even, you can, you know, take it and move it a little bit with your wrist. That's the good part about a credit card is you can kind of flip your wrist with it. You just have a little bit more control with the credit card. And Murder McCauley says you can take the lid off and control the drops that way as well. Yeah, that's true too. Because it has a little, um, it has the typical thing inside of it like with any hair product. And you could use that to even drip your, you can also use the little pipette. So you can put a little pipette into it and squeeze out how much you need as well. So I'm going to blend this just a little right there where it's white. So here I'm going to come up with my little palette knife just a little bit. So Valerie says I use it on mine and my girl's uh, hair too. It's awesome. And Linda says she sees a dragon in your uh, wave right now. A dragon? See, I mean, this is with a palette knife, but I could even use my card and just very softly drag it over that white and you get that splashing effect. But let's just say, let's just come down over it. I'm going to do white right along the edge. I have some screen. This is screening that you buy at the hardware store. So it's like a fine mesh screen. And I don't know if you can see it that way because, well, there's a white background. They might can see it better against the white background. 
but I'm going to take this and just softly drag that white over and then wipe it off. It's kind of like using a paper towel. It just it has a little bit different effect just for something different. So almost like the white is crashing over. And so I think I want, I'm going to bring a little strip of white down here. I'm going to use my bigger, no, I'll use my medium size paint spreader, um, scraper. It's a plastic tool from any hardware store. And so I just use the, the very, I kind of go almost parallel to the canvas and just lightly drag. This is not one of my better waves, but anyway, I'm just showing you kind of how I do it. Um, I think I'll go heavier up to here and maybe come down here a little bit. We'll just, we're just playing. It's just having fun. Just very lightly. So I'm almost going parallel with the paint on the canvas. But see, I love how these colors on top of that white there make those big cells. That looks really cool to me. And then I'll do... I'll drag it out here just a little bit, get that a little bit of that vivid viridian phthalo green coming out there. And then maybe I'll take my palette knife and come up here and just drag it a little bit. And now I'm going to dip my palette knife right in the color in the cup. I'm going to come around that top of the wave. Yeah, that was out of scene when you did. So. Yeah, I know. I know you didn't see. I just put my palette knife into my cup and got some of that paint. But um, let me take my, my bigger, my plastic scraper here. You have to make sure when you're using this. This is a 12 by 12. So this is just is basically just adding a hint of color up here. So now I'm going to take my paint, I'm going to take the paint right out of the cup on my palette knife and go right back along the edge of this wave just to define it a little bit better again. And I'm just taking a little bit of the color off the, uh, the puppy pad here and I'm bringing it up here. So I'm basically just blending in the colors with the white just to give it a little something up here. And I'm just going to use my finger and kind of mute it and blend it in just a bit. 
I don't want any hard edges. I wanted actually more of the lime green to come out, so my colors are deeper than I wanted, but that's okay. I still like it. I like it. Maybe I'll do a little turquoise right here. So I'm just taking my stick and putting a little turquoise. I'm going to use my card. See if there's an area you don't care for. You can always adjust it. It takes a very, very light touch. I'm going to leave that little bit of white there so there's some contrast, right, between the wave crashing over. And it's, it's got a lot of green in it, so I probably should have used more blue and less green, but I like the, the variation of the colors. I like the blues and greens together. You know, if you look at a true ocean wave, sometimes when the wave is crashing over and the light is shining through, it'll be kind of that, that beautiful sea green that's just a beautiful color, like an emerald green. So you actually do see tones of green in the waves as the light goes through it. So um, that's why I'd like to put a hint of green. But now I could also do this in a much more muted fashion. I could use a softer blue tone with it. I could throw in some copper or uh, a soft Venetian gold and even bring in some soft metallics into it as if those were like almost like sand or something mixing into the wave and leave out the deepest color like the dark uh, thalo green and you know so I can make it a much more softer muted pour but um, I really I like the colors of this I love the vibrancy of it you can take your fingers and do things you know you, for me, I always want people to know that doing acrylic pouring is, for me, like therapy. And it's my passion. It's what I love to do. And you don't have to be afraid to do it, and you don't have to rush through it, because that is the whole purpose of you adding Floetrol to your paint. It's an extender. It makes your paint stay wet longer. It helps it flow better. So. You don't have to rush through this. And I think some people get nervous when they pour and they feel like they have to rush through it. And you really can take your time. You've got a lot of time to work with it. And if there's an area that's like ugly or muddy to you, go over it with fresh color. It's kind of like very forgiving. Acrylic pouring is very forgiving, and I like that about acrylic pouring. I need all the forgiveness I can get. So I think I'm going to call this one done. Myrna says it looks great. So I'm going to bring it up to you so you can just see a little closer. And like I said, you know, the colors are, you know, probably a little greener than I would normally prefer. Yeah, Christina says right, it's not right. Yeah, no, it's not resin. It's just uh, Floetrol is just to, they originally, originally made Floetrol. It's for regular painters when they're doing painting in a house and they need less brush strokes to show in their walls and, or they put it through a paint sprayer. They add Floetrol to it to get less brush strokes, less roller marks, and um, it goes through the sprayer easier when there's flow control added to latex paint. We have a comment from M. Kadia Fox. My mother asked me yesterday if we can use gesso instead of white paint for flooding. No. You cannot flow troll. Gesso is like white paint. Gesso is like really medium. It is so is out of the way. Mm -hmm. 
Gesso is for priming. It is basically a white primer paint. So we have uh, nice, beautiful colors, it looks great. Um, beautiful colors. Thank you. Warbly on her. Hmm. So I'm going to do one final pour. Zoom out and just. Hello. I'm putting lipstick on again. Valerie says, I have a boring class to teach at the gallery today. Got to run. Thank you, Sandra. Everyone have a great day. Good luck, Valerie. Can everybody still see and hear me? Let me know if you can still hear me and see me. You can hear me? All right. So I'm going to do one more thing and trying to decide what I want to do. I think I am going to do a swipe. Let's do some a fun swipe. It'll be quick and simple. And so anytime I use my bottle paints, they are one to one ratio. And they have silicone in them typically. But sometimes, you know, if I finish up a color and it's the same color and it's got OGX, I will add it to my mixture in my bottle. So there oftentimes could be silicone and OGX in the same bottle. And I do shake them because, you know, they sit for periods of time. And if you don't use them, the paint will settle or separate. So I do shake the bottles. So let's see. I'm going to pull out my typical colors that I like to use. Let's see, purple, and got my greens. Do my the doxycine purple, the purple rain. We'll do magenta, red, orange, and yellow. These are all Deco Art colors. And we're just going to do something pretty and quick right here. And I'll probably do something floral because I love anything floral. So I think what I'm going to start with is maybe I'll do two different like bud looking things. And so I got red and orange. I'm just going to do dots. This bottle is full, so I'm dripping here. I had leftover paint that I added to my bottle, and it's full. All of them are full. Oh, some green came out. So I'm going to take my little palette knife, and I love this little palette knife. It's like an oval shape. So Linda Esselstyn is wants to know the tool that you spread with. What's it called, and where can I get one? 
This is in my Amazon link below the video. It is called a Wilton, which is that cake and icing company that you see at Michael's and Walmart. This is called an Easy Glide icing and fondant spreader. It's made out of plastic. It's not very expensive at all. And it's just a real simple tool to spread your paint pretty quickly and easily. But it's in my Amazon link below the video. I just added it to the chat as well. So I'm taking my little oval palette knife, which I love. It's just the right size for me. It's about an inch long. And it's oval, so what I can do is I can very softly drag my tool and then kind of twist it to come to a little point. So I like that I can control it that way. And I have a very unsteady hand, so you don't have to have a steady hand to do this. I've got a shaky hand. I'm the shakiest hand in the east instead of the west. I'll even... I don't know. Okay, so now I'm just going to make these like imaginary flowers. They're not even real flowers. I just like the color combinations. You keep saying below the video and there is no... Well, right now there's no link below the video, but after we're live and when it's finished, I can go back and add in the link below the video. Right now when it's live, there is no link showing, but we can add that in after the live video is over with. But you can also click on any other of my videos and it'll go to your Amazon link below the video. So you can always click on another video when this one is over with and Find my Amazon link and it'll be right there for you. You might have to scroll down because I have several hundred products in that link. Norma says, love how you are so detailed in explaining your technique. Thank you. I like to share my knowledge with people. I, I think it's, I think that's what we need to do is be more giving with our, our knowledge and not be so secretive about stuff. The world is a big place and there's plenty to go around. So I'm going to take my stick. I don't have this pink, but I'm going to drip a little bit of pink. And it's harder to do with the stick. That's why I like my squeeze bottles. So I'm just putting a little drip of pink on top of that hot pink. I didn't get quite enough. Okay. So now I'm going to go down this way. I'm just making up a flower. I could even make these two come together, you know, like that. You can take your palette knife and kind of make points with it just by curving it a little bit. So I like having a palette knife around. It's, it's great for scraping up paint and putting it back on the canvas, on the edges. A palette knife is just really great to have around as a tool. Christina Wolf says, as Alan says, knowledge is the one thing you can share with others, yet still keep it for yourself. That's true. That's true what Christina said. So, yeah, I'm just taking this and I'm just, it almost has a look like an iris, but it's not an iris. It's just more of a tropical looking thing. And you can even drag your palette knife into your white paint and scrape out some color if you need to. You know, if you want to make more of a definition, you just scrape out your color. And I'm dripping, so when you drip, you just stick your finger in and wipe it off and that paint will go away. And Kathy says no two are going to be the same anyway. 
that's true. I can actually try to do this same painting again, and it might look similar, but it's never going to look exactly like the first one. So you can kind of count that out. So now I'm going to do my deep green. Christina says, I'm loving this already. And Tammy Reese says, Sandra, you filled the world with joy. Thank you. And I cannot thank God enough for bringing you into my life. You are a blessing. Thank you. I appreciate the sweet comments. Do they know what your middle name is? My middle name is Joy. <laughs> That's, isn't that funny that my middle name is Joy? So I'm going to put just two little dashes of color here. And what I'm going to do is take my palette knife and just come out, you know, like it's almost like part of the greenery. And I can even, if I need a little deeper green, I can run it through there, you know. It's make-believe. And I'm going to go over this deeper green with a little bit of a lime green just to give it a little bit of variation. And so the one thing I've learned too is when you're doing controlled swipes like this, if you get your paint too watery and too fluid, it really spreads out on your canvas and you lose those shapes. So it's actually better to have a little bit thicker paints in the squeeze bottles so you have a little bit more control. And now I'm just going to do some leaves. And this is, this is the stuff I love to do all the time, is just uh, create something tropical looking and organic, you know, that kind of thing. So that's the deeper green. And I'm going to use this middle green, which is the festive green. And then I'm going to do the sour apple. So I kind of usually go from deeper to lighter colors. It's usually the, you know, just go from dark to light or from light to dark. And just keep it, you can switch it up if you want to, or you can keep it all in the same you know, kind of way. Okay, I'll switch it up here and I'll throw in, let's throw in, I have this little bottle of, I think it's bluegrass green. I'll put it instead of the yellow on a couple of the leaves just to give it a little bit different look. Can you show the color? That's a bluegrass green. It's kind of a, a warm teal color. It's not like here's turquoise. So if you see turquoise and I don't know if you can tell the difference in the lighting, but the turquoise is bluer and this is a little bit more green, but it's kind of like a light turquoise. So now I'm going to use my palette knife and go from the dark to the lighter and just swipe. And I'm not I'm not pressing down to the canvas. I'm just skimming the surface parallel with the paint. Okay? So, and then I'll... It says, uh, you're in your happy place and in can be a box of, ooh, I love this, so pretty. So you can even, you can even swiggle, you know, you can do a little bit of that. It doesn't have to be totally straight. It can come up and then bend down. But the key is, is when you're getting to the end of the leaf that you lift that palette knife up to the tip and that is what makes that point. And so this leaf can come up over the other one. And I swiped a little too hard and took it down to the white. So what I'll do is just add back in some colors. Maybe put a hint of yellow there. And you can very lightly just add that color back in. 
I put a lot of white paint on this canvas. I probably didn't need as much white as I put on here. And I'm going to run my palette knife through here just to kind of blend this, the two greens together a bit. And it also, it bleeds out a little bit and you can take your finger and come back in and narrow the line up a little bit if you want to. There are, there are no rules with this. It's just all about having fun and playing with it and getting it to where you like it. So, um, I think what I'm going to do this is I think Prussian blue, but it's got a really fine point. It's just a small, it's a little uh, cap that is made to screw onto a two ounce craft paint bottle. Let me, let me do it on the, make sure it comes out the way I want it to before I squeeze it on my canvas. So I'm going to do a little dot, and a dot, and a dot. Kathy says beautiful. Kathy DePaulo says you make that look so easy. Love this pick. Debbie uh, Yeagle, Yeagle from Heatherwood Studio says really pretty. Thank you. Linda Bennett says beautiful. Kay Sub says gosh, so beautiful. Thanks for being such a generous spirit, sharing your gift so freely. So this is wet on wet. I could actually wait until this is dry and do a more refined line, but I'm basically just dragging it through the wet paint, but you could wait till your painting is totally dry and add little details like that. Um, you know, I could go in and put a bumblebee up here. There's so many ways that you can have fun with your paintings. You don't have to uh, there's no strict guidelines for acrylic pores. You just do what makes you happy. And Brandy says, I aspire to swipe like you do uh, someday, Sandra. Just love your work. And Kim's creation just arrived. A lovely painting. Thank you. So, and I can go in and I can add a little bit of deeper green in here just for little highlights or shadowed areas of the green as if it were peeking through between the petals. You know, there's, there's a lot that you can do with this. Let's see if I can do me a little bumblebee. <laughs> what I'm with. So I put my little bumblebee there. And we'll put just a hint. I'll put a hint of that yellow and red from my earlier pour. So I've got a little bit of that Indian red, I mean the Indian yellow, and a little bit of that rose matter. And I'm just going to slightly drag it through my yellow a little bit. That just gives it a little bit of depth so it's not just totally straight out yellow. Now this is not going to show, oops, drop my lid in the paint. This would be a lot easier if it's not wet on wet. So I'm just going in and putting a little top part to it. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Kira. So I just drag a little toothpick through that black and bring it down for the antennas. You can also drag out the black a little bit as if it had little legs. And this is just with the toothpick. And let's see. What I'll do for the wings is I'll dip my I got a little blue paint, which is too much. I'm just going to take a little bit of that. So I'm just using the very tip of my palette knife to put a little blue. And I'll take my toothpick and just kind of round out those little wings. Christina says, beautiful, got to run to prepare for our live auction. Thanks, Christina, for stopping in, and good luck on your auctions. So, yeah, there's, these are just like really rough wings, kind of a big bumblebee. The bumblebee is spreading out. <laughs> So I can go in after it's dry and I can take white and close it in and make it smaller again. But um, I'm going to do, do a couple more leaves and go with the deeper color. I just add a little blue. A deep blue. So it's the deep green, the deep blue. I dripped there on the center of that. And maybe we'll take this um, this other green that I had mixed in the cup. Ooh, that dripped too much. I'm a Try to get some darker leaves to come out. See, that has some blue in it, which is really pretty. So I'm just twisting that palette knife. And I can, I can just pull it into the, pull the leaf into the stalk. Just make it look like it's meant to be. I don't like my bumblebee. He's growing. He's getting bigger. But I'll let him dry and I'll make him smaller with some white paint. So I think I've got a few little areas that are short on paint just a little bit where I've dripped and put my finger in it. But I think that pretty much is it for this one. So I'll have to change the bumblebee a little bit here. But here's a close-up. So the more fluid your paint is, the more water or more fluid that you make it, the more, the more that your design is going to spread out in your white paint, or if your white paint is really fluid, your colors are going to kind of bleed out. So just keep that in mind that you really kind of want a little thicker mixture when you are doing controlled swipes where you're trying to keep certain shapes and that kind of thing. So. Um, I think I'm done.
my poor bumblebee grew. So thank you everybody for watching and showing up and thank you for all your contributions. I really appreciate it. I can use it right now after moving into a studio and having the grand opening and everything. It gets pretty expensive. So I really appreciate it. It will go towards more supplies and I will bring you more videos constantly because I love doing it and I love teaching and I like learning new things and you know, I want to share with people how to be just a little bit more creative and do stuff where they think a little bit outside of the box with their pores, you know. But, you know, I love doing a regular dirty pour and stuff like that with the green and black and white. That was, that was really fun for me. So I love doing that too. But I do like to try to take it sometimes and just make it a little bit more intentional. So, I'm just... So, you got lots of thank yous. You're such a great teacher. Thank you for sharing your talent. Had a great time. Hope you do more lives. You are a great teacher. Thank you for so much for spending time with us. Uh, thanks, Greg and Sandra. Enjoyed this as always. It was fun. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Sandra. Alicia's looking forward to her private lesson. Thank you. Thanks so much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your afternoon and your talent with us. Yeah, it's kind of a rainy day outside, so it's like, why not go to the studio and do some fun pouring? So, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. I'll see you next time. Have a great day. And